Hello, my name is Larry Kearney. I'm a deacon at St. Thomas the Apostle Roman Catholic Church in Naperville, Illinois. And today it is my honor to lead us in a prayer service for today, Tuesday, the 2nd of February. This is a special day in the church. This is the feast of the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. And it's not only a matter of Mary and Joseph fulfilling the law and showing that Jesus, like all Jewish people, the firstborn, uh, were to be presented in the temple, showing the, the humanity of God. But we also learn about the prophet Simon, or Simeon rather, and Anna, uh, who are going to set the stage for the fact that Jesus was not only fully human, but also fully divine. And so let us begin, as we begin all things, by allowing God to give us a hug as we place our left hand on our hearts and begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. And so, my brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, and ever mindful of God's constant desire, not only to forgive, but to heal us, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to call to the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Creator to intercede for us in all things. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to the collective prayer, the collect. So we'll take a moment uh, in silence to pray for that which we're asking of God today. And I will also do the same. And then I'll lift your prayers and mine up to our loving God in this one collective prayer. And so we pray. All powerful and loving creator, Christ your son became man for us and was presented in the temple. May he free our hearts from sin and bring us into your presence. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And so now let us begin with the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. May the words of the Gospel be on my mind, my lips, and in my heart. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male must be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. 
it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And so, guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what had been said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband 70 years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the gospel bring you to life everlasting. Well, let's think about this. Mary and Joseph must have pondered the words of Simeon and Anna, wondering what this meant for their child. They, like most new parents, probably had dreams for him, but the prophecy of Simon and the words of Anna sounded somewhat ominous. When new parents bring their precious bundle home from its birthing place, they feel that their child is the most precious child in the world, and they begin imagining all the great things this child will accomplish. As they share their dreams for their child with family and friends, there's always someone ready to throw a wet blanket on their hopes and remind them of the cost of child rearing, both in financial and energy terms. The visitor would be better advised to say how lucky they are to have this precious child. He or she could then add this bit of advice. Love your child with all your heart and all your soul encourage him or her in whatever interests they display. If you do that, you'll be great parents. But if you try to live out your dreams through what your child does or accomplishes, you will only be frustrated when your child makes his or her own life choices, especially if they're not the ones you had hoped for. I think there's great wisdom in that. And in, in the gospel, when Mary is told that a sword will pierce her soul, I wonder what she thought about that. We know now, of course, that that, that prophecy came true as Mary stood at the foot of the cross. I mean, think about that. I know when I was being raised, 
I was given this image of Mary as lovely lady dressed in blue and, and meek and mild. <laughs> no, no, she was not that at all. She had to be an incredibly strong woman, strong in faith, strong in belief, strong in character, because how else do you stand at the foot of the cross while your only child is being literally butchered, which is essentially what crucifixion was. And it's being done before her very eyes while a crowd jeered at him. This man who did nothing wrong, who only tried to help, tried to heal, tried to bring justice. And all she could do was be a pair of loving eyes through that crowd of horrible taunting. The eyes that would fall upon her son to know that no matter what was being done to him or to her, because Jesus' suffering must have included his mother having to watch him die, that that love is is never broken. That chain is never broken. Now, today's gospel describes a meeting between the young couple and the infant child with Simeon and Anna, both of them well on in years. Simeon's response when he met the infant Jesus was to pray. He blessed God. His prayer has become part of the official night prayer of the church. But think about that. He blessed God. I think we should too. Anna's response on meeting the child Jesus was to speak about Jesus to others, especially those who were waiting for God to visit them in this special way. So she gave a speech to the people around while Simeon addressed Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Whereas Simeon lifted up his heart in prayer, Anna bore witness to Jesus and his parents and led him to look toward God in prayer. Anna's meeting with Jesus and his parents led her to look toward others in witness. So Simeon and Anna have each something to say to us about how to receive the Lord. We too are called to receive the Lord in prayer and in witness. We bless God. We thank God in prayer for the gifts of God's Son, the light to enlighten all peoples, and we proclaim God's gift to others by witnessing to the Lord in our own lives by what we say and what we do. The Lord who entered the temple in Jerusalem as the light of the world has entered all of our lives. Today, we look to Simeon and Anna to show us how to respond to his gracious coming. And so comes a wonderful time for us to lift up our prayers and our petitions to a loving and a merciful and a gracious God. We know that life is not fair. We know that tragedy befalls all people. Mary certainly knew that. And you know, you're only as happy as your most unhappy child. And so knowing that life holds its challenges and its pain, and knowing that we try to do our best for our children and in raising our children, we offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray that our children will find their own way to God. It is our responsibility to point our children and all those we meet 
to God and then get out of the way because God has plans for them and they're often not our plans. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end of violence in all of its ugly forms. We pray that our children are spared from violence or have the grace and the strength and the fortitude to resist violence. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our children who are suffering from addictions, from those among us who are suffering from addictions, addictions of any kind, and that through the, the grace and strength of all of us, and for the technology and the gifts of the professions that are brought to bear for people who are struggling from addictions or any emotional illness, especially at this time of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. And we lift up all of those who are first responders, all of those who take care of the sick, both in and out of the hospital. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we lift up all of those who have died and now rest in God's loving, merciful, and eternal embrace. And for their family and friends left behind to grieve their passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, ever caring, ever strong, you are father to us, you are mother to us. You are all that is good, holy, glorious, and majestic. And we thank you for all of the gifts you give. We thank you especially today for the gift of the ability to gather together to offer to you our prayers and our petitions. We do so in confidence, knowing that you will answer them in your holy time, and according to your holy will, for we ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, if you are with someone, please, as appropriate, take their hand and we lift ourselves up with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you. And now let us as best we can offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our Amphithon, with my own eyes, I have seen the salvation with which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations. And so let us pray our closing prayer, first in quiet and thanksgiving, and then again, I'll gather them all together. And so let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon, who did not die until he had privileged the welcome of the Messiah. May this communion perfect your grace in us and prepare us to meet Christ when he comes to bring into everlasting life, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Again, as always, who are you? The body of Christ. Indeed, you are the body of Christ. And in that dignity, therefore, lift up your eyes, your heads, and your hearts, and prepare to receive God's beautiful blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift you up and fill you with his grace and the spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God come down upon you and remain with you forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us go in peace glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, everyone.